For who was so free as the sons of the waves? Hearts of all our ships, jolly tons of our men. We always are ready, steady, boy, steady. Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the first foray into a series of naval engagements known as the Dardanelles Campaign, located in Dardanelles Strait, Ottoman Empire, and involving elements of British and Ottoman Empire navies from the 19th of February through the 17th of March 1915. Winston Churchill, the first Lord of the Admiralty, believed he had a plan to destroy the Ottoman Empire quickly, thus removing a valuable ally to Germany and making the war on the Western Front end faster. Churchill believed he could destroy the Ottoman opposition by driving his navy through the Straits of the Dardanelles that links the Aegean Sea to the Sea of Mamara. He assumed by arriving with a fleet of British warships at the Turkish capital of Istanbul, he would crush the Ottoman Empire's will to fight. The attack started on the 19th of February 1915 with the British battleships HMS Cordwallis and HMS Vengeance bombarding the forts defending the strait. After a disappointing attack, the British Admiralty realized they would need to directly attack the forts, not just fire them from a long distance. What the British had not realized was that the Turks had been steadily reinforcing the straits with 10 different minefields, consisting of more than 360 mines. On February 25th, the British Admiralty believed they could win fairly easily when they saw the Turks evacuate the outer Dardanelles defenses, and by the end of the day they delivered British Royal Marines to the Kumkale and Sed Albert forts, taking them without losses of note. On March 1st, four battleships tried to progress but encountered minefields again and were unable to penetrate deeper into the Dardanelles. Caught off guard by the effectiveness of the mines, the British realized they were unprepared to conduct minesweeping operations with their current ship. In desperation, they decided to convert civilian fishing trawlers into unarmed minesweeping units with civilian crews. Between March 1st and March 13th, the British Navy launched several sorties to try to sweep the minefields. The largest sortie was on March 13th. The British Royal Navy's HMS Amethyst led a force of six minesweepers with additional support ships in yet another desperate effort to clear out the dangerous waters. The end result of the six minesweepers was four of them badly damaged along with the Amethyst herself. This resulted in the death of at least 19 of the Amethyst sailors, plus an unknown number of minesweeper personnel because the British Admiralty didn't deem to keep track of those numbers. These minesweeping operations would continue until March 18th, which will then develop into the final assault on the Dardanelles. Losses weren't extreme for the Great War, and no record of Turkish losses exist at all, with at least one British cruiser, four civilian minesweepers damaged, and more than 100 dead, wounded, or missing. Join us next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War. We fight and we fall.